My name is Charlotte Byrne and I'm a librarian at the Bodley Library at Christ College, Cambridge. Our exhibition, Christ at War, features letters from old boys at the Perth School writing from the First World War to their former headmaster, Dr Rouse, who was also a Fellow of Christ's. Our first letter comes from Robert Devereux. During the war, he was a lieutenant with the 1st Battalion of the Royal Scots. The edited letter you are about to hear is headed British Expeditionary Force. It's read by Nick Safal, who works for the University of Cambridge. Dear Dr Rouse, We are in the quietest part of the line. We are occupying the Daily Mail trenches, which they show to the King and all the big people who come out, because they are perfectly safe and absolutely unlike any other trench. They sent some of Kitchener's army to us for instruction. They came into our nice, comfortable trenches and said it was quite different to anything they had expected, and they didn't mind trench life. Then they were given an hour's notice and packed off to Ypres, where they were slaughtered. The Germans opposite us are a cool lot. They don't seem to mind very much about our snipers. Every now and then you can see a door open in their parapet, and three or four men crash out with shovels and disappear in a snap. But if you do get a bullet in, in time, they stampede. There is a story that once a German strolled across to our trench and said, You're the first Royal Scots, aren't you? Our men were so surprised that they said yes. Then you'll be D Company, said the Hun. They answered yes again. Captain Clark is your commander, isn't he? Then he walked back again to his own trench. There isn't very much about us that they don't know. Yours sincerely, R.B. Devereux. Our next letter is from Geoffrey Clay. When war broke out, Geoffrey joined up and became second lieutenant in the 17th Battalion of the Cheshire Regiment. He served at Gallipoli, from where he wrote the letter you are about to hear. During the First Battle of Gaza, he was wounded and died. He was aged 23. The reader of this edited letter is Fred Lucy, who works for the University of Cambridge. The letter is dated the 6th of September, 1915. Dear Dr Rouse, I arrived about three weeks ago after a very enjoyable voyage. We called at Malta and Alexandria on the way. After leaving Egypt, we had a very interesting voyage through the Aegean, among islands that I expect you know very well. At present, we are out of the trenches and in a rest camp down by the sea. It is a most peaceful spot, except when the Turks take to shelling us. I and the other officers of my company have a comfortable little dugout on the side of a sandy cliff. We have found several interesting remains here in the course of our digging, rough pottery and a few coins. One of the things that interests me most when we were up at the trenches was the chirping of the cicadas. I always used to wonder how the Greeks could call a grasshopper musical, but now I know. All the men are fairly fit except for a mild form of dysentery that is rather common here. The food is splendid under the circumstances. I'm afraid paper is scarce, so you must excuse this scrawl. Yours sincerely, Geoffrey W. Clay. Our final letter is dated July 1916. It was written by George Anderson when he was just 18. A star pupil, he won an exhibition to Keyes College, Cambridge, but went straight into military service. In the war, he was second lieutenant of the 5th Battalion of the Rifle Brigade. George was awarded the Military Cross for conspicuous gallantry after leading his party in a successful raid on enemy trenches. In this letter, George tells Rouse about his forthcoming medal presentation ceremony. Our reader is Harry Long, who was a pupil at the Perth School and is off to university in October. Dear Dr Rouse, Very first of all, thanks for your letter of congratulations. Tomorrow I have to my sorrow, to appear before the brigade and hear the commanding officer of the army recite on the night of the 25th of June during a raid on the German trenches near etc. and be presented with a small portion of purple and white tape. I wonder if you have heard that Johns, who was the officer commanding South House two or three years ago, has got the military cross. We met almost a month ago opposite a now famous village. I was on trench duty and he was sitting on the parades watching his retaliation he is in command of a trench mortar battery for hostile mine warfaring on our front line. Julius, who is in this brigade and whom I saw just before we moved up to our assembly positions on the night of the 30th of June, is, I fear, missing. 
Woodhead and one of the Turners were also on trench mortar, somewhere in the same part of the line. Yours sincerely, G.H.G. Anderson